So you just in time for another, actually eBay antique YouTube unboxing. And uh, yeah, I <laughs> I got hollered at again by my husband. He told me I'm banned. So yep, I'm banned. So this one and I have three other packages um on their way. And after that, I am cut off um, indefinitely. So <laughs> I had to savor this. I have to savor these last unboxings. Um, because he cut my credit card up and, uh, that's the end of my fun. Yes, I'm a shopaholic. What do we got in here? Let's see. And my dog won't shut up because, uh, the, uh, mailman is outside. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, so I'm a stickler for packing and this was not packed very well. It was just wrapped in bubble wrap and no padding was placed in the box. It was just like that. So let's just hope this uh, fragile antique is not damaged and we will find out in a moment. Oh no, the most hated thing of all, the nasty used Ziploc, ew. Okay, so this actually does not top the one boxing unboxing I did where I received an item in a used bloody pillowcase. Yes, a used bloody pillowcase. And the guy had the nerve, the eBay seller, <laughs> as I received the item to ask me uh, via comments, you know, messaging uh, through the eBay uh, app, uh, did you like my packaging? So uh, what the hell does that say? Uranus? And thankfully, it's not Uranus. <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? We have a treasure box. Yes, we do have a treasure box. Does it have treasure inside of it? Let's find out. The answer is no. But again, at least it's not Uranus. Oh my God. Imagine getting an antique or anything off of eBay and a used dirty pillowcase with blood stains on it. And my dog is scratching to come in. I'll be right back. Actually, come to think of it, the second most grossest uh, packaging I got from eBay was somebody shipped me an antique book in a used cereal box. And when I say used, it was a generic brand of cereal. That was like not like the most worst part of it, but it actually had like freaking generic frosted flakes in it. And uh, yeah, and the, the book was covered in sugar and all this like stains and crap. All right, well, so far, so good. So what do we have here? And we'll look close up at the mark. And you see it says Germany and there is a lion a mighty lion symbol. And who made this box? Okay, this was made by a German company by the name of Erhard and Sohn. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Now, what we have here is a Gothic revival. This was made between 1900 and 1910, again, by Erhard Sohn, which was a metalworking factory. Um, also, um, the family were very good at chasing metals and they made all different kinds of metal type of uh, items, not only boxes, but candlesticks, antique miniature doll furniture out of brass and uh, chased brass, that is. And uh, yeah, let's ch take a look at this. Now, um, one thing I'm not too thrilled about is this white powdery substance on it. And no, it's not anthrax um, or cocaine or frosted flakes uh, sugar. Um, basically, it's like patina that actually turns into a, like a whitish type of crusty type of material. So what I am going to do is I am going to clean this with Brasso. Um, I could damage it, which is not a good thing. I end up, I could end up taking the finish of the brass plating off. So what I am going to do is I'm going to start out by testing it in an inconspicuous spot, like say here and see what happens. If it takes off the plating, then I'm not going to continue. If it actually doesn't damage the plating and take off like the thin layer of, you know, like it's like almost like a glaze or a gloss. By the way, I just noticed that this is damaged probably because the seller did not put any padding inside the box. This got bent uh, during delivery. Well, back to what I was saying. Um, if it doesn't take off like a layer of the, uh, of the wash, you know, the brass wash, then I'll continue to clean it. Let's see what happens. And uh, so look at it before with this uh, crusty white, you know, powder-like substance. And let's see what happens after. Okay, Brasso is great. Okay, 
So here's uh, what I worked on so far. Okay, so look at the nastiness, right? How dark it is. And then we got the anthrax over there. And then look at this, okay? Right here, look how much cleaner that leg is as opposed to that leg. And uh, by the way, I'm pissed off about the fact that that leg got bent. I could possibly bend it back. Um, if I have a rubber mallet, I might be able to hit it. But uh, yeah, that was poor packaging. Okay, so what I am going to do is I am going to take a toothbrush, well, a uh, denture brush, and rub Brasso throughout the whole entire thing and, and just like totally clean it out. And let's see how much shinier this gets. So take a look at the dirtiness. And uh, in a moment, I'll be back uh, to show you the difference. All right, so far, Brasso is the bomb. Okay, and my kids are going to cringe if they watch this video. This stuff is the bomb.com. <laughs> you can see the difference. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. Focus, focus, enhance, enhance. All right. Let me just show you if you want to do this on your own, which I highly, highly do not recommend um, because you will probably ruin it, blame it on me, say, oh, I'm such a jackass for telling you to do this to your antiques. Leave the patina on if you're going to sell it, especially because uh, some, pe some people actually like the patina. To me, it looks like dog crap. All right, so you're going to put the Brasso on a denture brush that you can get for under $2, right? And just get in there. Get in there. And I'll just do a little a little bit with you guys. And you got to get uh, into every one of these little nooks and crannies. And this has a lot of nooks and crannies, if you know what I mean. And as you get in there, right, um, there's never going to be enough Brasso. You got to put a lot of this stuff on. All right, you got to be generous, not cheap. You know what I mean? You can't skimp on materials. And you just get in there with that brush. And you're not going to get every single nook and cranny. It's impossible unless you sit there for hours and have like one of those microscopes so you can see like every corner. And then you're going to get something abrasive and, and dry and clean like a paper towel or a napkin or even a microfiber cloth or a t-shirt that's all cut up and beat up and ripped up, you know, dish towel, you name it. And just like make it so that it can get into the nooks and crannies. You follow what I'm saying? And you, you're you going to see the black come off of this. Like over a hundred years of patina, which is probably a stupid thing on my part, but I just don't like it. I don't like things that look like, it's like, I don't know, a rusty barnacle. And so as you're doing this, okay, you're going to realize something. And we'll get to that in a second. You're going to realize that's still not enough. So you're going to have to keep reapplying and redoing, reapplying, redoing until it uh, completely cleans up, which is probably going to be about 200 hours from now. I'll be back. All right. So a lot of you hardcore antiquers out there right now are probably shaking your fist at the screen. You probably want to actually wring my neck because... You're probably like, why, why in God's green earth would you take off the patina off of a 110 year old box? Well, because I have OCD and because if you leave like this pasty stuff, I don't know if you can see like that white pasty stuff, eventually that turns into verdigris. And then what happens is the acids in that, uh, in those like things that are left over, you see right in the corner over there on the metal will end up eating away at this box and will eventually disintegrate this box. So what I'm doing is actually conserving this very, very old box. And uh, when it first actually was sold, it was almost gold or brass looking like uh, it is on the left side. So there we go. All right, that little spot just took me 30 minutes. So I, I anticipate another two to three hours worth of work. I will be back and we will see uh, if it looks any better. Wish me luck. Okay, so I spent a good three and a half hours cleaning this thing with a toothbrush. And is it gleaming 100%? The answer is no, because I could not spend five hours. So there is going to be some uh, crust on it in certain spots that I couldn't get to. Now, what we have here to the left and to the right is other air hard and sewn metalwork um, or repousse boxes. And uh, as you can see, they made quite beautiful, beautiful pieces. Now, this one over here is a cigarette box. And this is what I believe a cigar box. Um, I'll show you also their logo and their mark. It was of a lion. Let's try to 
get a zoom on that. We're probably not gonna, gonna be able to do that. And you'll see like a lion logo. There you go. Sometimes it'll say Germany and sometimes you'll just see that lion logo. Be on the lookout for these boxes or anything with that lion logo because um, these things sell for quite a bit of money. Uh, if you're thrifting or flea marketing or antiquing, keep an eye out. Anything, anytime you see brass or metal, look for that lion logo. It'll be Erhard and Sohn. Now there were a lot of um, imposters on the market. Um, Japanese companies did make copies of these boxes. So be careful out there, identical. And a lot of them will be marked Japan. Some of them won't have a mark at all. If you don't see a mark at all, it's not Erhard and Sohn. They always mark their pieces, especially their boxes. So what I think I have here is a cigarette box. Look how much shinier this is. Remember, it was a rusty old barnacle. Now, I do not recommend you do what I did with the Brasso um, unless you're an expert or you're willing to destroy your antique because there could be a possible bad reaction. I did it because I paid so little for this. I only paid 30 bucks for it. It was a sleeper. The seller had no clue what it was. Um, but if I paid what the retail value was for it, I would have not have touched it at all. Um, there is a chance that you could destroy your antique, take the uh, original uh, finish off of um, anything metal, and uh, then that's it. You only have yourself to blame and don't go blaming me. Okay, so what I think I have here is a, a cigar box because usually their jewelry boxes or trinket boxes were lined with silk or velvet and they had like tufted pillows in it. Now you see there's a uh, wood in here and it looks like it might be cedar and on the uh, lid as well. So look at, look how, how pretty it came out, right? I mean, it's not perfect, but it's gleaming <laughs> and it's much cleaner than it was before. And uh, so we have a like a Gothic revival going on here, circa 1900, 1910. So we have um, saints, and it's like medieval, very medieval. We have uh, saints, we have uh, like a crucifix. I don't know if I can find that part. Yeah, there's a part with a crucifix. Let me just uh, spin it around. These things are very heavy, these boxes. They're solid, solid, solid metal. And uh, yeah, there's the crucifix. So we got the saints going on here. So let's go to a cutaway. And I'm going to show you uh, some other pieces that you'll find. Now, again, you have to be careful because you can get duped into getting a Japanese imposter. So Erhard and Sohn has been around for quite some time. Um, you will find lamps made by them out of uh, brass. You will find other kinds of boxes. Um, and again, that's the spelling right there, Erhard and Sohn, more lamps, other kinds of boxes, even metal with wood. That's another common thing that you'll find. Again, another really cool lamp. And this, I think is an inkwell. It's in German, so I can't tell you what that means. Another box, another lamp. The lamps go for quite a bit of money. More items, here we go, another box. Um, a clock. Yes, they made clocks too. And another clock. Circa 1910 on that. We have, uh, this cool thing right there. A lot of their stuff was very Art Nouveau in design. Here we go. This is really cool. Religious pieces. Um, we have biscuit jars. Even dollhouse furniture. Dollhouse furniture made out of brass. So look on, uh, keep on the uh, lookout for the dollhouse furniture. Um, the dollhouse furniture is very, very, very collectible and goes for big bucks. More clocks, look at that. Casket boxes. Um, yeah, so as you can see, they made quite a bit of things. Uh, let's get, uh, let's check out some other things. Here's a casket box, similar to mine. Um, it sold for 620 euros with an estimate of 200 to 400 euros. And as you can see, that's actually um, a lot more money in American. Um, euros are worth more than American dollars. So that's over $700 US. Um, I was lucky getting it for $30. So here's some of the items that sold. So, you know, I'm not just showing you prices. So $1,450 for a miniature um, gramophone. It's a dollhouse accessory. I told you the dollhouse accessories sell for a lot of money. Here's a two-tone bronze casket box. And best offer was accepted um, under 450, just under 450. 
Here's another item, a miniature perpetual calendar sold in like the three, $400 range. Here's another um, item, dollhouse accessory. It's a miniature dollhouse scale, $349.50. And here's a box. Um, it's a cheroot box. So I guess that's actually the other box I have must be a cheroot box. And a cheroot was like um, almost like a, a miniature cigar, almost in a cigarette form. And uh, so as you can see, they get uh, quite a bit of money for their items. Here is another casket box. That's sold, um, and it's sold on auction for $303. And uh, there you go, another item. Christie's, 1910, they sold the lamp, and it sold, uh, it's a, actually a lamp from 1910, Art Nouveau style, and they sold it for 1,200 euros. Very interesting. So I hope you learned something today. Now, be on the lookout for Erhard and Sewn pieces. Um, they've been around since the 1800s. Um, be careful, though. There's a lot of Japanese imposters. Um, and just be on the lookout for that lion insignia that I showed you. And you know that you have an Erhard and Sewn product. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys all soon. So long.